Aaron, how are you doing today? Thank you. Uh, super excited to be here. Amazing event, meeting so many interesting people, innovation all around. Just uh, really exciting. So many companies, so many founders, um, amazing talks been going on. Anything in particular stand out that you enjoyed so far? So sometimes it's kind of the usual suspects. You get to go to every show and you see the same people. Uh, this time I think it's seeing some new faces in and uh, hearing about some new uh, kind of ideas. I think the recent uh, stable coin bill has yeah. sprung out some folks who are kind of now trying to do some innovative stuff around stable coins. Um, recent Trump administration actually on Monday where they announced that they will no longer look at our industry as a risk is actually opening some thoughts about, you know, other places where we could go. So really, really nice developments. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things have been happening the last like week or so, even this week. Um, obviously, obviously there's the, um, the genius act that's, you know, probably going to get passed. It's like just around the corner here. Um, there was, yeah, I remember something where Jerome Powell came out from the fed and said that, um, you know, crypto shouldn't be looked at for as a risky asset anymore, especially things like stable coins and that banks are allowed to touch it. They should touch it, go for it, innovate. Very different stance in the last few years. Um, I think just the other day they said that crypto and, and Bitcoin should be considered even as a collateral back for mortgages. I don't know if that'll end up turning out very well, but I mean, a lot of things have been happening. Uh, the regulatory environment is, you know, constantly shifting. Have you been following it quite a bit? We we have. I know that uh, people, especially with the previous administration, had a very, I'd say, uh, shall we say, adversarial view of uh, regulatory aspects. But in our view, regulation is good. Somebody really nicely said said that uh, regulation is the way for government to say uh, for companies, don't optimize for profit where it hurts society uh, and, and found any kind of rules there. I think there's always views on how far regulation needs to go and everybody wants to dial it in slightly different ways, but everybody agrees the absence of any regulation also is not kind of creating the vehicle and the the rails for for us to move forward so as you said the genius act the upcoming market structure bill these are things that are going to help this industry get comfortable and everybody else to, to get comfortable with our industry yeah it's quite a balancing act isn't it like the last few years have been like too much regulation oversight enforcement um without regulation and and now it's like kind of the opposite i don't know if i'm I should be happy about it or not because it's like just so wide open. Everyone's like, go ahead, do, do what you want. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, well, that won't end well either. But it's good to see, you know, legislation starting to get passed. And I think that'll create such a good framework in the U.S. and, and really give companies um, some guidance on what they can do, what they should do. And I think we're going to see an amazing uh, flourishing of this industry. But but curious, like, was there anything in particular that got you interested in this space? Like, did you invest in it? Did you uh, connect with another co-founder and start a company? Like, what's what's your entry into this space? Sure. So I I think I can take credit for something that I believe many others have done, which is I I got some Bitcoin early on and I sold it early on, uh, not, not realizing uh, the full potential of where this can go. But really, for me, uh, kind of the interest in this industry came about when I was working on a on kind of my previous startup uh, uh, called Symphony, which was in the financial industry. And it had become a success and it became literally mission critical for many of the banks uh, in, in Wall Street. And what then I realized is that the banks or the customers were concerned with mission critical infrastructure being not only down in terms of service availability, but being taken over by an adversary. Imagine if your company, if your bank or any business is, is using some technology and an adversarial player comes and buys that company, you would be in trouble. You would have to switch providers or, or do something else in then I started thinking about, okay, so how do they protect this? And how, how can we move to a place where this is not an issue, where there is no censorship or no kind of concern over kind of takeover? And that started me thinking about decentralization technology in general. 
that started opening my mind about that and got me curious about this industry in yeah. in general. I, I know you you have something called Shielded Technologies. Yeah. Do you want to tell me a little bit about it and what your guys' mission, your ethos is? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Sure. So, uh, Shielded Technologies is the labs or the engineering company behind the Midnight Network. For those who have never heard of Midnight, this project started back in 2019 when Charles Hoskinson, who's known for Ethereum and later Cardano, asked a simple question. Can a blockchain keep a secret? How could we do that? And went on an adventure with research and a lot of work to try and bring that to bear. So I know there are a lot of other projects talking about privacy. Um, we've taken, I think, a very innovative approach and mainly around two things related to privacy. One is obviously you need to protect data. Uh, so you could do that either by encrypting the data and putting it on chain and then you've got to kind of figure out who has exposure to it or uh, a better approach is probably to keep the data in the wallet and just put a zero knowledge attestation on chain so you're not really even putting the actual data on the chain. But we realize life has both a private part and a public part. Some things you want to keep to yourself, some things you want to expose, and you really need to have selective disclosure as to kind of the degree of what you want to share and with who. So just having everything public, which is what pretty much most blockchains do today, is not a vehicle that meets kind of life needs. Have everything private is not good either. You, you need that kind of gamut. So Midnight is built with what we can refer to as rational privacy. You've got the selective kind of disclosure. But that was actually the easier thing to solve. Imagine that because protecting the, the data is one thing. Protecting the metadata was a whole other ball of wax. Uh, you see, there, there are other players that try to do this. I'll name like Zcash, Monero, who have been pioneers in this space in doing kind of shielding the token that pays for the transactions, shielding the metadata, got them into some hot water with the regulator because I could technically buy, let's say, $100 worth of Monero, give it to you, yeah. and the regulator would say, hang on, buddy, I, I think you just established a channel for money laundering because everything is shielded. That's not not okay. So we were really stumped at how do we solve this problem because we haven't seen a good solution for this. And everybody else that says, oh, it'll be okay, it's you know on the on-ramp or off-ramp, so that's where we control this. The regulator is like, I'm not liking, tell me a better story. What we ended up coming up with was a design where you have two assets. You have a token, normal token, unshielded, Every regulator is comfortable with on exchanges, wallet bridges, normal stuff. It's called night after midnight. Holding that token generates a second resource, a shielded one called dust. And it's the dust that you use to pay for the transactions. Now, I'm sure your viewers are going to go like, wait a second, you just moved the cheese. I mean, they, you haven't solved anything. Right. Well, the beauty is once you have two resources, you can really design a new rule system. Yeah. Dust is a decaying asset, so it cannot carry value. It's also not transferable between people. So we immediately mitigated all the money laundering concern, but still delivered kind of privacy of metadata. And that really is a game changer in the industry. Is it just Midnight that you're providing this for, or is there other chains out there, other projects that are wanting to tap into this as well? Because this seems pretty pretty groundbreaking for the space. I've seen a lot of kind of conflict in the Web3 community. Everybody is trying kind of to pull the, the users their way. I think it's time for the industry kind of to come together for the benefit of the customers. And one of the things that we put on as kind of a core value for us in designing Midnight was how can we create collaborative or cooperative tokenomics that bring the industry together? So to your point, how can this work with others and bring kind of other ecosystem into the story? Here's the beauty. Once you have two tokens, you can actually design a new, whole new concept. I'll give you an example. Let's say you hold a whole mountain of night tokens and 
they generate dust so you can process transactions. But you find out that, you know what, I actually don't need that much dust. I'm, 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 it's like I'm generating energy, but I'm, I don't find really good use for it. And what else could I do with it? <laughs> it's collecting dust, exactly. So what you could do is you could say, hey, uh, folks, I have excess dust that uh, is being generated, but I'm not using this energy. And you could proxy and delegate that to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that somebody else would pay you for, for access to that energy. You're essentially leasing them kind of some of the capacity that, uh, that you have. We call this a capacity exchange. Now, the beauty of this is that you can receive payment in any form, USDC, USDT, Ether, Sol, ADA, whatever. So in a way, that allows somebody, let's say in another ecosystem, let's say on Ethereum, to say, I'd like to use Midnight, and I can pay for transactions on Midnight with Ether, thereby allowing any other ecosystem to have access to the Midnight technology and still use their native tokens for that. We believe this type of cooperative tokenomics is going to help this industry come together and make kind of Web 2 come in. One of the challenges that I think people are not really kind of realizing is, is that in the Web 2 world, we don't pay for every transaction. I'll give you an example. Google. I, I assume you use Google from time to time, right? We go in, we type a search, we press enter, we type another search, press enter. Now, transform that experience to a Web3. You would have to connect your wallet, and every time you run a search, you would have to pay a token, right, on every smart contract search transaction. How many users we think would like that experience? Probably nobody right we need to find a model that can deliver the web 2 experience on web 3 technology by having two assets what we can do is if you're google and you're running the smart contract you can hold a whole bucket of night and subsidize the transactions using dust that it keeps on being generated for your users so this dual token or dual asset, I should say, um, design really helps you deliver Web 2 experience on a Web 3 kind of design, giving access to other ecosystems. I really think this is a way that the Web 3 world will move into in the future. Have you spoken to Google about this yet? <laughs> <laughs> we have spoken to them about other ideas. <laughs> nice. Uh, but, but what about other Web2 companies? I imagine this could be an interesting way for them to branch what they're doing already in the tech space into Web3 and, and do it right, too, whereas a lot of Web3 companies, maybe it's, you know, they have to backtrack or they have to make a lot of changes. Maybe it's it could be complicated for them. But this, this seems like a really good, like, something to be transitional for a Web2 company that wants to evolve. Sure. So, uh, you know, when... when Charles Hoskinson first reached out to me a few years ago about joining this adventure on Midnight. I must admit I was skeptical because I, I, I came, if you will, from a fintech space, a little bit more kind of Web 2-ish kind of thing. And I could immediately say I, I could see a few reasons why a Web 2 enterprise would not adopt Web 3 technology. First one was privacy. I don't know of any business, to, you, to your question, a Web2 business or any business in general that would put all their stuff out in, in the open. Uh, can you imagine a bank that uh, when you deposit your uh, kind of uh, assets into shares, all your assets with the rest of the world, shares every transaction that you do on the bank account with the rest of the world? That is effectively what's happening with Bitcoin and, and everything else, right? So privacy for, for any real business or most of the businesses in the world, privacy is critical. The second thing was um, cost of operations. Today, it's a challenge that we have that I haven't seen this solved yet because you don't know how much it's going to cost you to run your application on top of some of these infrastructure. You're paying with a native token. That native token is volatile. And so how can you create a budget for how much it's going to cost us to run an application on this infrastructure next year? We got to design a system that allows this 
price predictability or operating cost predictability to happen. And then there was regulatory as issues, and there is also some uh, scarcity of developers. I know we think that you know we're all the best thing on Web three, and we know Solidity, and we know I don't know some other language, but in the grander scheme of the world, we're a drop in the bucket. Let let's be honest with ourselves a little bit. Uh, we go you go into any big enterprise they don't have solidity developers they don't have all the other languages they don't they like basic stuff rust even rust is not that big c and java and and, and other more popular languages we we have to transition kind of into uh into those designs so that's that's the type of things we designed midnight to make happen so we can bring the web to world into the web three space so is this the primary reason that you came to permissionless I, I, there's a lot of potential um with other projects and companies here i've seen a lot of advertising for midnight by the way as well um what, what's kind of the objective that you're trying to get out of permissionless my goal really is not just to spread the word out which is natural but also to find really exciting projects that we can integrate with and partner with. Um, we've opened up our test net last year. We had over 2000 applications kind of come in and try to build stuff. Uh, we're gonna launch the token distribution next month uh, and start kind of giving people access. Uh, but really now for us is the time to have this conversation with the world of Web3 all these fantastic ideas and players that are already doing things but have not been able to cross the chasm, whether it's because of privacy kind of elements, whether it's cost of operation or any other reason, I want to see this space succeed. I want us to see real world use cases come about. And I think that I, I'm not trying to be the one ring to rule them all. I'm not trying to solve everything. There are so many amazing things happening out there. If we can partner together, we can make businesses and customers successful. Aaron, you're, you guys are working on some amazing stuff here. Where can people go to keep up with all of it? Um, do you guys have social media? Do you have a blog, website? Do you have a community? Where would you send people that are trying to understand more about um, you know, Shielded, but also Midnight and, um, and Dust and all these different things that we talked about today? Um, wh what's the best place to go? Thanks for the plug-in. <laughs> so um, best place is on uh, on X or LinkedIn or uh, social media, uh, midnight.network. You can find us there. Uh, everything, the information is all there. We've literally opened up the tokenomics document this Monday got over 6 million impressions, so clearly there is interest. Uh, and if you're curious about Shielded Technologies, you can find us also on, on X and uh, all the other social channels. We're the engineering labs uh, behind the scenes. If anyone wants to connect with you personally, um, are you on LinkedIn? Do you have a Nax or are you, are you private? <laughs> all of the above. And happy to connect. Uh, please reach out. Telegram, Signal, LinkedIn, X, whatever you like. Uh, happy to connect with you guys and uh, embrace uh, the Web3 change that we bring to the world. Ron, it's been a pleasure having you on today. I appreciate the conversation, sharing everything that you guys are doing with Shielded, uh, what, what Midnight is doing. Um, I, I think the advertising is fantastic. I've literally seen it everywhere. Been fantastic. Um, enjoy the rest of Permissionless. I know it's about to wrap up, but I hope you got a chance to see some great talks and panels and, and network with some more people. Um, and keep me posted on everything that's going on with Shielded. Would love to do something again in the near future. Uh, maybe another sit down like this as well. Um, so yeah, let me know. Thank you, and thank you everyone. Happy to be in touch.